welcome to Dead Man Talking. Tonight's story is chapter two in the series entitled The Winlatter Forest Secrets. Chapter two. Let's get straight into that. The next few hours, as I lay there waiting for the sun to come up and break the silence, were almost a blur until my alarm clock went off at 7am. I had been staring out the window at the treetops swaying in the wind. Beams of sunlight again moved and danced through them as the sun came up. I had to notify the police. Someone. Oh no. What are they going to find? What do they think I did it? I thought to myself. My breath seemingly out of reach as panic washed over me. I have to call them, I muttered aloud, waking Faye as I did so. What? What time? What time is it, Dan? She said as she stroked a long lock of her brunette's hair away from her brow. For a moment, I swear, everything seemed okay. <laughs> anyway, I had called the local authorities and two units were sent up to us. Faye was confused but as worried as I because she knew something serious had happened. It was written all over my face. She kept asking me for more details and I had to ask her to just stop. Just wait until the police had been. Just know that by no means does she go outside until we know more. Yes, it sounded crazy, I know. But for all the years we'd been together, she knew I was acting like this for a good reason. When I have left, then I will tell you more, I promise. But for now, baby, please, believe me, there is some kind of the words desperately trying to come to mind. Bear, Faye replied excitedly but still concerned. No, no, not a bear. I, I don't know. Dan, will you just say it? She demanded, frustrated with the lack of answer that I had already given. It just looked like a damn, a damn werewolf. Okay, a werewolf. I blurted out hurriedly. It was huge and it just looked like a werewolf, goddamn. A cold sweat started to appear across my forehead. A werewolf? Really, Dan? I suppose now you believe in Bigfoot, finally. She laughed. My face stayed its same course of stone cold serious. She nervously giggled and smiled while looking me in the eyes. My God, you really mean it. But I... Are you sure? It was all Faye could manage before there was a knock at the door. All I could do was nod and look back in the eyes of my wife, as if my own soul was trying to convince her how serious I was, how serious this was. I answered the door to two men wearing almost identical suits and sunglasses. They quickly flashed their badges and made their way inside, pushing straight past me. And as I made an attempt to protest, I was soon tased. I awoke some time later, slumped in my recliner with a pan from the kitchen being emptied over my head. <laughs> oh, who the hell are you? I screamed as consciousness pulled me back to the situation. What do you want? I said, hoping to get some response. My wife sat next to me with her hands the same as mine, tied to the chair that of a guy close by. Both men simply just stared at us. Then the taller one spoke. It appears you are or rather we have a problem with some of the local wildlife. The taller man of the two almost asked smugly. How much have you seen? What have you heard? He said as he slowly crouched down in front of Faye. I screamed through the gag of my mouth. Faye almost having a panic attack. He then jumped over to me. You're the one who has seen him, ain't you? He said as he leaned right up in my nose, face to face. God, his breath stunk like arse and coffee. Yeah, I've seen him something. But I don't know what it was. I glared back at him. And what about the old man? The engineer? What did he tell you? He asked this while smacking me across the collarbone. The pain was intense and I could hear Faye screaming as he then grabbed my head with both of his hands. Smack! He sucker punched me in the chest and brought his steel toe cap down after it with a crunch, winding me of any breath. Now... You have exactly two minutes to get your shit together and tell me what they told you 
and what you seen is screamed at both of us. Okay, <coughs> okay, <coughs> I tell you, you fucking piece of shit. I said, spitting up some blood and gasping for air in my now very sore chest. Of course you fucking will. <laughs> he remarked, so cock sure of himself. I think there's a bear or something out there in the forest. I again gasped and wheezed for breath. Oh no, you know we're not here to fuck around, Danny boy, eh? He gestured with his bear like fist clenched and his chubby index finger pointing at me. What about the other animals, Danny? No? Nothing mentioned by the old boy? Again, he kicked me and face screamed at him to leave me alone. <coughs> right, alright, I said, coughing and spluttering. There was something odd about the old boy. He, he kept staring into the forest around our trucks as we spoke. And he warned me to never go in the forest after dark. That was it. He never said why. Just... Never to go in after dark, I said, looking this piece of shit in the eyes. He never got to tell me what the hell was going on here. Whatever was out there got to him before I could return, or before he could come back up to the property when it was finished. Again, the other guy next to Faye did nothing but stand and stare at me. And then Faye, and then me again. Well, the taller one declared, here's the thing. You're not supposed to be here, and neither are they. He said with a chuckle in his voice. The old man was eldest to a local farming family, who, well, have been working these lands around the valleys for hundreds of years, generations of generations. You get the fucking picture. He continued. The warning he'd given you was served with genuine message. You really don't want to be in those woods after dark, Danny boy. In fact, if I was you, and your pretty sort of a wife, I'd get the hell away from here as soon as possible. He declared, but almost with a tone of, we don't have a choice. Oh, oh, he asked. I almost forgot to mention. <laughs> Do not mention any of this to anyone. As of now, you're both under our surveillance. What? I said, pissed to the point of my blood boiling. You still haven't told us who we work for. That is information you do not need to know and will never need to know, Danny boy. Just think of us as your garden angels. <laughs> We're part of the cleanup crew. Who, well, he paused. Clean up. <laughs> Again, with that maniac like laughter. It's up to you to stay or not. But I do think it's best you make a move ASAP. It's almost a full moon. <laughs> so the werewolves, I shouted. He's a clever one, this one, ain't he, John? He declared almost again smugly to himself and his partner. No, damn boy. Not werewolves. Something altogether far worse. They have been here forever. The local people know where to stay and where not to stay. They have an almost understanding with some of these creatures. But believe me, boy, there are things in this valley and forest that will skin you alive whilst watching you in the eyes just for pleasure. As he again came in close to my face with his disgusting breath, rancid and hot. Remember, not a word. Well, your pretty wife here might have to go meet their alpha male. And with that, they cut the ropes off us and walked casually towards the door. But what about the... I said, but was cut off. The police have been handled. The old boy had an accident while working on the phone line. Remember, not a word. He said again before turning out the front door and closing it quietly. We sat there, stunned. Faye began crying and I rushed over to, to comfort her and tell her everything was going to be okay. What do we do, Dan? She cried. We can leave right now, honey. It's fine, I replied. Well, where will we go? All our money's in this. We can't just leave. She sobbed. I know, but we... I didn't know for the first time in longer than I could remember. I didn't have an answer. That day was spent with me making reinforcements to the cabin and trying to make a couple of spears. 
I must have looked ridiculous. Had we not lived in such a remote location, I surely would have ended up on YouTube or something. <laughs> in my head, I had watched Bear Grylls survival shows, so I had some idea of what I was doing. Well, that's what I thought anyway. Faye jumped straight on the internet and started researching anything remotely relatable. Lycans, werewolves, wolfmen. Until finally, as it was getting late afternoon, she called me over. Hey, come check this out. I rushed over and sat down with her while sipping a piping hot cup of coffee. She began to explain how through her Bigfoot research community, there was a word and reports of such werewolf looking creatures and they were named collectively by the term Dogman. I could not believe what I was seeing. These are all the reports in the USA, Dan, she said. So far, there was a number of these things all over the USA. I haven't checked yet for England, but I'm guessing they are. As she then brought up a witness picture description of a beast of Bray Road. It was close, but not quite right. How about this one? She asked. She showed me another witness description and the hairs all over my body stood on end. That's it! That's what I saw! I said aloud. This is a dogman report from Ohio, Dan. Why the hell? No. How the hell are these things here? She said, almost crying again. I heard about them last year, but... But I just dismissed the idea. Again, tears welled in her eyes. Hey, I said, handing her my jumper to wipe her tears away with. We boarded up pretty tight in here. I think we'll be okay. I said, trying to sound supportive. Again, unsure of what I was saying, I had no clue if we would survive the next few hours, let alone the entire night. Okay, Faye replied, smiling to me. As evening approached and the sky over the quarry dimmed to a watercolour blend of orange and blues with crimson notes far off, it was suddenly abruptly smashed by the deep revolving rotor sound of inbound helicopters overhead and over towards the forest and quarry's outer areas. What the hell? We both said as the two Apache helicopters flew low to the forest canopy and swept across the valley and surrounding forest. The noise was tremendous. They swooped down over the cliff face and began, I can only guess, searching. Searching for them. Just then all hell broke loose as the two helicopters engaged with something on the ground and roars far off in the distance could be heard above the damn helicopter blades and relentless bursts of gunfire. And then I imagine a number of targets as they battled on into the night for hours and hours. We both hurried to the bed with some provisions and our laptops. I grabbed my make do spears and grabbed the two biggest kitchen knives I could find. Thankfully, one of them a huge meat cleaver given to me by my old grandfather, who used to be a butcher in London. What better way than my own grandfather's blade to wield as a weapon, I thought to myself. Around 2am, there was a loud crashing sound and something made its way through the trees and brush towards the cabin. We both sat up and looked at each other. What is that? Faye whispered. It must be one of them. I replied, whispering also, trying to not draw attention. I got up and slowly made my way to the window, peeking out through the crack in the boards that I'd placed on the outside. This is crazy, I whispered to myself as I looked. We could hear it drawing closer and closer. It's breathing then audible in the night ambience. The, the gunfire had ceased for the moment. Then it passed through the tree line out into the open. By now, Faye had joined me at my, at my side, arms around me, peering through a crack in the boards. Oh my God! She whispered, voice trembling, and I felt her knees give a little at the sight of this creature. Although it resembled a werewolf, this was no movie. This dog man was a real life creature of God's creation, or possibly a creature of the devil himself. It awkwardly loped its way out and across the drive until dead centre with our cabin. He had clearly been injured, as the both of us could make out blood and tissue loose and maimed on its skin, its right arm seemingly broken and hanging awkwardly to the wrong side. It paused in its journey across and turned to glance up at us. I swear, it knew we were looking at it. The strangest thing then again happened. As we looked upon this beast, purebred force in fear and violence. 
it was like it's speaking to me directly to my mind. As I could, could not maintain eye contact or whatever. I don't know. It was just strange. Faye said she felt the exact same feeling. It made its way over towards the steps and again stopped, sniffing the air with huge, long snorts and then continued to walk up onto our decking. What the fuck do we do, Dan? We sit tight, stay still and quiet, okay? I replied, hoping she had enough strength to see this through for the both of our sakes. The heavy and lengthy strides took each step of its clawed feet came down with a booming thud. We cuddled up in bed watching and waiting, listening as it continued to circle the property. We could hear it trying to handle to the doors and then came from the windows as its long black claws reaching through the boards to tap on the glass on the other side. It continued again and we sat silent, watching and waiting for the sun to rise, or this thing, this monster, to burst its way in, whichever came first. Gradually, it appeared to get bored as it continued to circle the property, regularly scratching and sniffing loudly. And then there was an almighty howl that seemed to stop this dogman in its tracks. It turned and bound away on all fours into the forest and finally was gone. At last, we sighed a huge sigh of relief. But for how long is all we could think and feel? There were no more visits from the two ghost agents and gradually things returned to a sort of normal. Do you think they'll ever return, Dan? Faye asked with hope in her beautiful eyes. I don't know, baby. I really don't know. It's been a month since that night. I replied trying to sound positive and excited to start living our dreams. Three months later went by and still there was no sightings or sounds. But still that screaming silent ambience hung around the property and surrounding land. I'm going to meet with the builders next week down at the quarry baby and get things started with the fish farm and camping areas. I said excited to finally get things in motion, all the while the thought of the whereabouts of those creatures nagging at my conscious like a bug or insect gnawing and scuttling around in the back of my mind. Are you sure? Faye responded looking shocked at the notion. I think so. I mean we've got to start making some money before the year is out. We're going to be in trouble. But what if they come back? She responded looking more than a shade of white. I, I know, I I've contacted Jimmy from Bethnal Green. You remember Jimmy, right? I said, kind of hoping that she didn't. As Jimmy was the sort of guy who caused a fair deal of mayhem wherever he seemed to go. Oh, Dan, you can't be serious. Jimmy, the guy's a freaking lunatic, she said as she glared back at me. Yeah. Precisely the type of guy we might need around here if those things come back. Plus, he can get hold of a couple of shooters for a good price. I replied hoping she would ignore the obvious headache that Jimmy was so fondly known to cause. You are fucking kidding me, Dan. What the hell do you know about guns? She declared angrily shouting at me in frustration at my suggestions. Look, I know it's not ideal, baby, but I don't think we have a choice. We need something to protect ourselves from them. Do you have any better ideas, Faye? I barked back, but all it did was cause a stagnant rift to well up from our nightmares and worries. I left and headed out the door down towards the quarry in my truck, slamming the front door as I left. What the hell are you doing, Dan? I muttered to myself as I climbed into the truck and made my way down the bumpy and overgrown dirt road that had once led to the edge of the quarry site. I pray to God Jimmy can get hold of something serious, because I'm all out of ideas. I said to myself once more before finally pulling up just outside the quarry. The sun was beautiful and a warm breeze carried through the long, overgrown grass and trees. This could be perfect, I thought. Yeah, perfect dream. Or perfect nightmare. Hope you guys enjoyed chapter two. Uh, forgive me for the lack of uploads this week. I've had quite a few uh, 
problems with my family member being in hospital. Um, it's been quite a stressful week, but we're back on track, guys. And uh, I thank all of you for your kind prayers and best wishes. Um, really, really do appreciate it. Two, of course, please let me know down below what you thought. Again, please do like and share. And as I mentioned before, guys, this is now an interactive series, just like the LBL. As in chapter three, I will write it based around your suggestions. So if you would please share and comment with your suggestion of what you would like to see in chapter three, four, five, six, seven, wherever we want to take the series. Of course, comment down below on your ideas as well. Or you have my email, dmtforestoffear at gmail.com. I hope you guys are having a wonderful week and looking forward to a relaxing and scarier weekend. And remember guys, above all, be safe, not sorry.